Just do it. Welcome to the No I'm Ashley. And I'm Adam. Hey, you guys. Nino Kuni 2 is out today. If you caught uh, the review that we did uh, a few days ago, you'll know that we liked it quite a bit. Uh, if you haven't watched that yet, we'll put it in the end slate and the description so that you can. But spoiler alert, we liked it. And we've been playing it and playing it and playing it. So we've learned a lot as we played. Sometimes we learned that the hard way, but that doesn't have to be you. To justify all those hours, we probably should have been doing productive work things, but we were playing this instead. Here are some helpful tips to get you started. First off, plan on visiting your kingdom frequently. When you begin building your kingdom and recruiting citizens, you get a coffer and that will fill with king's guilders and stores that the kingdom earns. King's guilders are the currency you use to research new technologies, build or upgrade facilities. Stores are the items your citizens create through farming or hunting or fishing and, and so on. Unlike most of the game, which doesn't advance until the story does, King's Guilders and stores build up in real time as you play, not real time. So if you quit the game, they're not still earning in real time, but while you play, they're being earned in real time and they can max out pretty quickly. Then you're not earning anything until you clear it out. So get used to popping back into your kingdom every oh, half hour or so and upgrade your coffers when you can. That will help a lot too. Mm -hmm. Use your tactics tweaker. The tactics tweaker can be used for things like additional XP, higher treasure chests, drop rates, and more damage. But you can also use the tactics tweaker to raise your damage against a specific enemy type. If you're stuck in a battle heading into an area with a specific set of monsters, you can give yourself an edge by moving that slider towards the enemy type that you're fighting, and when you're done, you can slide it back freely. As you play, you encounter monsters you, which you earn battle points, and you can use that to spend on your tactics tweaker. And once you decide to reset any points, you'll be able to spend some King's Guilders that you earn from your coffers. And you can also slide the, the sliders around for free, so don't worry about doing that. That doesn't cost anything once you've spent the battle points on it. But refunding points does cost money. Correct. So, uh, it's fun. It's definitely something to try out. They don't spend too much time telling you about it in the game. Either. No, um, no they, it's just they, there. They, they, they touch on it, but it's there. You'll want to experiment with it. Don't panic if you can't complete a side quest immediately. Look, this is a JRPG staple, we get it, but you're gonna frequently encounter side quests where characters will ask you to find or retrieve something. The good news is if you have at least one of those things, you can generally inspect the item in your inventory to learn where those materials can be found but you may not always have that luxury. You'll also frequently encounter quests asking for items you've never heard of. And guess what, that's okay. The quests are not gonna go expiring on you, so you've got all the time in the world to encounter the items that they need. And even if you do get some of the items, I don't know, maybe through the treasure chest or a boss encounter, and it tells you what area it can be found in, you may not be familiar with that area. Again, don't panic, you'll have plenty of time to explore the world and find it later on and then come back. Honestly, you may not even be able to get to that area yet. Right. Uh, you should also be revisiting kingdoms fairly often. As you progress the story of Nino Kuni 2, the characters of the world will offer up new and helpful side quests. If you're short on things to do, go back and revisit the past kingdoms periodically and look at your map to see what new quests have popped up in your absence. This will become especially important as you look to recruit as many new citizens as possible and new quests open up each time the story advances, so there's always something new to do and someone new to help hopefully into your kingdom. Yeah, that's a great source of recruiting. And also uh, getting uh, better army troops. Yes. Plan on taking your time and exploring. This one all is pretty common sense, but it bears repeating. If you're engrossed in the story and you're following it along as quickly as you can, I don't blame you. It's a fun story to follow, but you're likely to find yourself in an area with monsters that are a lot tougher than you are. If that's how you prefer to play, you know what? You do you. But if you don't want to be under level, just take the time to fully explore each area before you move on. Not only will encountering more monsters bring your levels up, it's also how you'll find a lot of hidden areas around the world that contain new materials or special monsters or higgledy stones or even dream doors. Those things will all sound a lot less like a foreign language when you play the game. Um, it'll make your life easier in battle and help out on a bunch of side quests because look, a lot of people are gonna be asking you for a lot of stuff throughout the game. Leafbook isn't just for gossip. Leafbook is Nino Kuni 2's version of Facebook. Or and social media of Or some social kind, media something. something. It's a pun. And you'll encounter tons of posts there, but some of them are surprisingly helpful. While Leafbook is a fantastic place for citizens to post pictures of their food and their latest vacation, of course. they will also post useful tips. These will give you hints about new potential citizens to recruit to your kingdom, tips on where to find hidden treasure, and monsters to keep an eye out for. You can also like any posts on there that have information you want to remember to make them easier to find later on. Also, skirmishes. Skirmishes can be tough. Revisiting skirmish battles you've already fought is a great way to level your army. One of the things I had some difficulty with at first was getting enough experience for my army to tackle some of the skirmishes that pop up as side quests after you beat the first one. It seemed like the difficulty spiked really hard really early on and I couldn't find anything that I could 
take on. Fortunately, most of the skirmishes you get into can be refought, and you're gonna wanna take advantage of that. Not only because you'll wanna level up your main army, but because you need a way to train up new troops as you recruit promising new citizens who then bring their companies with them. Some skirmishes are dotted around the overworld, but you'll also find a bunch through side quests too, and those can be good to take on even if your army isn't quite tough enough yet. Even if you lose, you'll be able to retry, and your army gets to keep the experience it earned. Uh, mini side note as well, uh, each side quest has a recommended level in your quest list. This is completely separate from the skirmish level, which depends on your army's experience levels, not just your characters. And the skirmish level you can only see from the flag that's planted in the overworld where you encounter the skirmish. It's a little confusing the first time, but you get used to it. <laughs> And don't forget about your little higgledies. Little higgledies! Between exploration, combat, kingdom building, puzzle solving, side quests, and recruiting citizens, and countless other activities, it may be easy to forget the little guys that have been following you around this whole time. If you feel that your higgledies aren't as effective as they used to be, you may have forgotten to give them the proper love and care and food and cuddles that they deserve. Mostly cuddles. Mostly cuddles. Be sure to level up your higgledies in your kingdom, as this will greatly increase their effectiveness in battle. Each higgledy also has their own set of abilities and personality traits that may or may not not complement your playstyle or your other higgledies. Even if you have multiple higgledies of the same color, be sure to check their abilities and personality types to make sure everything is to your and their liking. Lastly, some abilities may have a higgledy picture along with a number next to it. Use this ability when you have the proper number of higgledies and your ability will absorb the higgledies and do extra damage and possibly modify the attack. And always keep an eye out for Higgledy Stones. You'll find them dotted around different areas in the world. When you interact with them, they'll give you a clue about the offering that they want. Give them what they want, and they'll join you in battle. If you're having trouble in combat, also don't forget to eat. This one kind of skates under the radar in the game. They don't talk about it too much, but food can actually provide some really helpful buffs and effects, so stock up when you find a vendor. You'll also encounter side quests throughout the game that will reward you with recipes you can take back to your own kingdom and cook up as long as you've got the ingredients. Some of those ingredients can be tough to come by at first, but once you cook the recipe, your kingdom chef will be able to make it for you on demand. Check out the library if you're a completionist. If you're not a completionist, please avoid this. If you want to get the most out of Nina Kuni 2, your library will become an invaluable tool. In it, you'll find almanacs for both Higgledies and citizens, which will not only give a nice description of these, but also show you how many you have collected and how many you have yet to collect. Even more useful is the section on tainted monsters, which will show you all of the tainted monsters you've encountered along, along with their level, and also give you a location note so you can go back to fight them when you're ready without having to search around and not be able to find them for hours, because I haven't done that. Definitely not me. The <laughs> library also has a section that shows vital game statistics, which will show you things ranging from game time played, how many pebbles you've collected, and even the amount of times you've jumped up and down. That's a lot of data. <laughs> Consider keeping a notebook as well. This is, I mean, remember you used to do this back in the day with like passwords and mm -hmm. clues, whatever. That strategy can actually come in handy here too. I find a notebook really helpful for keeping track of things like Higgledy Stones in particular and where to find different level skirmishes since the quest menu doesn't tell you what skirmish level those quests are at. Or, you know, you can check a wiki. But hey, if you want to do it all on your own, this is pretty useful. I encountered a Higgledy Stone at one point that wanted corn, which I didn't have yet. I forgot to write it down. Now I have the corn, and I don't remember where the Higgledy Stone is. Don't be me. I think I'm in the same exact position. Just the one that said I want something yellow, and I threw the rest away. That's Fuck. it. <laughs> there you go. Those are a few quick tips to keep in mind when you start playing. And shout out in the comments if these tips are helpful to you, and let us know what you think of the game. Or if you know where the one that wants corn is, because I need to find that Higgledy. Thank you very much. I think it might be in Cloud Coil Canyon. Okay. Oh, I'll look around. You will return her to me. <laughs> so long. My plan is complete. Your king's bond is mine.